Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to show you how to make a cannon which shoots in three different ways by using various methods and they're actually they're pretty simple. I'll include all of the scripts. I'll go through this fast because it's it would be a really it would be a longer video if I had to explain everything and set it up. So, I've already set it up. All right, so we have three different cannons. Um I use one, which I'm going to demonstrate now. A trigger one and an automatic one. So the cannon use is the cannon that um, is going to that when we walk uh, next to it, um, a button gets displayed which says E, and when we click E, it's going to shoot a cannon, and the cannon is going to destroy that door. Don't mind the purple. Don't mind the purple textures because I haven't added any textures to the broken parts of the door. So as you can see, when um, we shoot the cannon when we click E next to it. You see if here I click E, nothing happens. But when I go here and I click E, oh, and I click E, uh, we shoot cannons. So yeah, um, and the cannon when it uh, collides with the door, the door gets destroyed. Uh, but if I try to walk through the door like this, I can't uh, destroy it. So I can only pass when the door is destroyed. So um, that part we do by layering and uh, this we do by script. So yeah, I'm going to show you that later. Then the trigger part. Uh, so this is pretty much when we walk next to a trigger or which is in this case this like buttonish type thing. So when we walk next to it, a cannon gets spawned and shot. So uh, if you see there's only one cannon so we shoot it and uh, I can't really get it because I positioned it bad but it shoots a cannon the same way this one and it doesn't interact with the door and now we have the last one which is cannon auto and you can guess it just automatically shoots cannons in some period periods of time so let's wait a bit it shoots a cannon it shoots another one and again so yeah I'm gonna show you how to make all three of these cannons so let's start with the one I guess that's the most the easiest the cannon trigger so we have I'm gonna link all of these scripts in the description so cannon trigger shoot so I made this um, making a public transform a position cannonball a rigid body which is the cannonball and the float uh, a force amount which is the force we're gonna want to push the cannonball in a certain direction so void on trigger enter when we enter the trigger the script is on and if it is marked as a trigger rigid body cannon body uh, this is just uh, cannon rigid body so this is just uh, declaring that the cannon rigid body is rigid body and it has rigid body functions so cannon rigid body is instantiate a cannonball which is a cannonball position cannonball uh, position cannonball and rotation cannonball which is the position and rotation of the transform the empty game object we use in our scene and it creates it as a rigid body so when it creates it we're gonna wanna push the cannon rigid body add force so we're gonna wanna add the force um, the we're gonna take the position of the position cannonball and use its forward position to add force in that position if you understand so we're gonna add a force uh, in the forward direction of the position cannonball and we're gonna multiply that force by the force amount we stated here so when uh, you just go ahead uh, make a cannon uh, position uh, ball position and I uh, if you can see a cannon trigger um, I made a ball position like right in front of the cannon, not over here because then it's going to collide with the cannon itself and the ball is not going to go forward. So you're going to want to put it a decent amount from the cannon so it doesn't doesn't actually touch the cannon and, and interact with its collider before you shoot it. So uh, I put the I put another thing in it, shoot trigger, which is I've um, untaked the mesh render because it's a trigger, we don't want to see it. So the mesh render, when you walk through this mesh, um, it's a box letter. It has its trigger on it because it, it is indeed a trigger. So when you walk through it, the cannon gets shot. I've already shown you that. So let's see the cannon auto. So 
this doesn't need much pretty much anything it just needs a ball position and yeah I forgot to add I uh, also instantiate a ball effect as you can see there's a there's a um, effect here which when the uh, cannon cannon goes shooting fire forward there's like a big boom going on from the cannon because it gets shot out um, I haven't added to the cannon trigger I forgot you can just add it by instantiate by making another public um, uh, game object um, equals public game object and uh, call it effect you can uh, literally copy the same line this uh, this thing literally the same thing and just you can copy this paste it instead of cannonball type effect position you can also use the the cannonball's position the position where the cannonball gets fired and it'll also add an effect all right so here we have uh, for cannon auto it's pretty simple we got the same things the ball the ball position the effect the explosion so uh oh sorry um so let me just show you how i did that let me just see shoot auto all right so here it's a bit um it was a bit tiresome and it needed some effort so what is this what is all this these ifs so it's all for debugging and the uh, so we have a transform ball position rigid body ball so static float time minimum time maximum Float force amount public game out. So the only new things is this. So I made a void spawn ball. I made my own uh, function, which is spawn ball. So this just states uh, what spawn ball is, and it's literally the same thing in trigger shoot. The spawn ball is when you shoot the ball, um, and you send it flying forward. So I did an, uh, in void start. I uh, stated what the spawn ball function is, and it's the same in the trigger shoot. The, the same on the on trigger enter but it, the names are just different so in void start I I um, stated some time to spawn I made a new float called time to spawn and it's the time before um, the first shot gets spawned so it's random dot range time minimum and time maximum so it's gonna differ info repeating is just uh, that means that the function I state it just uh, that I made earlier is gonna repeat um, and I'm gonna re and it's gonna repeat every I don't know a few seconds you got you can state the second you have to state the seconds though the seconds are the time to spawn which is random dot range ran uh, and this other part is invoke is um, you have a function invoke and invoke repeating the repeating one makes it so it repeats the invoke only calls it once so the random dot range three and seven is a range between three and seven seconds so it's gonna repeat every three to seven seconds um, you also need the same things as trigger it's except you don't need to trigger you just need to fill in these ones and last part which is my favorite and the most realistic the cannon use one you have a trigger which is where you walk in it uh, we have a GUI script and I also added the cannon shoot script on it you can add it to the cannon as well doesn't matter so the show GUI script sorry um, so the show GUI script is pretty easy public class show GUI so on trigger enter when I enter the I first I state the uh, show GUI it's a boolean and they have a texture which is a texture that gets shown when you walk in the uh, trigger so the when, on trigger enter when you walk in the trigger uh, if the tag if the thing that walks in the trigger is tagged player um, it shows the GUI and when you exit the trigger, if the object that exited the trigger is the player, the show GUI is false. Why use this line if the tag is player? Because something else might come in the trigger, like a cannonball from some other part, and we don't want um, uh, to say E when something else walks in the trigger because you're just going to walk around and suddenly it's going to say E and you're, you can fire the cannon. What? So we want the player to walk in. And uh, I have another uh, function void on GUI, so which states what happens if the show GUI is true. So if the show GUI is true, GUI the draw texture, new rec, screen width, screen height. This just uh, tells us you can mess with these. Um, these are the um, these are all the this is the scale of the um, 
of the object of the texture that gets created and these are the locations so yeah that's the GUI script and we have a can shoot one which is uh, we also have we have the same things literally the same things so this is just um, on trigger stay so that what happens is when you come in the trigger I didn't want to use the enter because the on trigger enter gets called when the frame that the player colli collider touches the trigger collider and we don't want that because you can't you wouldn't be able to call it when you're standing in only when you touch the trigger so um, I used on trigger stay because that means when you stay in the when you enter the trigger and when you stay in the trigger so as long as you're in the trigger if the thing that in the trigger is player and if the player clicks um, a use which is defined in the input which basically means fire one which is left mouse button um, ball rigid instantiate play ball ball position ball rotation is rigid. this is the same thing so it gets spawned so get button use it's not fire one it's e I stay I made um you go you I made a um, edit input system one second let me just find project settings input so I made a use um, name and called it E so everything in my game that needs to like get triggered or whatever I I um, say that I say that um, the get button down is use and I stated in here that the use button is E all right so that's what fires the cannon and uh, the door breaking I'm gonna do in another video it's pretty simple too it involves some layering so yeah if you need any help tell me and I'll see you next time I'm high as I've ever been higher than heaven sits roll up my weed and think about my exes and jealousness how to stay current and relevant this be my story I'm selling it higher.